All right, so the first chord is the A13, second chord is B flat seven, sharp 11. Then it goes back to that A13 chord for the third measure. And then in the fourth measure, it does a uh, E flat nine, sharp 11. And again, in a traditional blues, those first four bars could have just simply been an A chord. And then the, in the fifth measure, it goes down to the D chord which is the fourth. Um, what's cool about throwing in this E flat nine sharp 11 chord is again, it's that half step movement. So it's a half step above that D dominant chord, which is gonna be the next chord. Um, and again, anything a half step up that goes back down is this tension and release thing. Um, so anyway, so that fourth chord is your th second finger on the sixth fret of the uh, A string, which is an E flat note. Then your first finger. Then your it's kind of tight in here, but I, I like this voicing actually. Uh, your first finger can then bar the fifth fret uh, of everything from the D string, uh, the D, G, B, and A string. You're not going to play all those notes because other fingers are going to do stuff on the sixth fret, but you just hold that bar. So first finger, sixth fret, uh, A string, first finger on the D string of the fifth fret. Then your third finger is going to play the sixth fret of the G string. Fourth finger is going to play the sixth fret of the B string. So it's basically you have this E, it, it, it's essentially like an E flat dominant nine chord, but you're lifting this and you're playing the fifth fret with the first finger on the E string. So, so again, that's uh, on the A string, sixth fret, D string, fifth fret, G string, fifth, sixth fret, B string, sixth fret, and E string on the fifth fret. So the chords so far. That's the fourth measure. The fifth measure just goes to a D dominant chord, a D dominant nine, which uh, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. And that's uh, second finger on the fifth fret, first finger on uh, the fifth fret A string, first finger on the fourth fret D string, uh, and then you bar the rest basically with your third finger. So that's G string, B string, and E string with the third finger on the fifth fret. So that's. And then that goes for a full measure. So you have. All right, so then after that, he goes down to a G13 sus4 chord. And basically, if you hear that the difference between that is he it, he's still barring that fifth fret or I say he I don't I'm not sure what voicings he used actually in this but uh, when you're doing that chord progression that change from that D9 chord to the G13 sus4 the only thing you're moving really is you're, you're not playing that low note the a note uh, the a string uh, you're just starting with basically moving that first finger that was the third in the D chord on the fourth fret of the D string down a half step to the F note of the uh, of the D string, and then you're still barring the same as you were with this D9 chord. So you're barring the fifth fret with your third finger um, from G, B, and E string. So you just move down. And this, this note that you just moved down to is the dominant seven of the, the flat seven of the G chord. So by simply just moving one note, you're suggesting a whole entire chord. So you can hear that movement. And then after that chord, 
um, it goes back up to the A13. So that whole thing is, and I'll just do it real quick in a 4-4. Before I get to the next chord in the progression, uh, I'm going to slow down for a second and, and I, I know this is turning into a long lesson, I'm sorry, but uh, I, I think it's cool to examine these chords and, and if you see what he's doing with uh, in a standard blues, the first four measures could have been that A and again he throws in every measure he does a different chord. So the first one he does A13, then he does the B flat 7 sharp 11, then A13 again to the E flat 9 sharp 11, and that's when he goes to the 4 chord, the D9. Now, just like that whole beginning section, he could have just sat on an A13 chord the whole time for 4 measures, and then gone to 2 measures of the D9 chord. But instead of doing 2 measures of the D9 chord, he does the, the, second, he does the second bar of the 2 measures of D, and he throws in the G13. Then he goes back to the one chord. So you can play these chords uh, if, if you're just doing a straight ahead, you know, blues, and you, it's just you got four bars of A. Instead of playing four bars of A, you could throw in that B7 sharp 11. Or same thing with the D9. If you got two bars of D9, instead of playing. then going back to the A chord, instead of playing two full measures of that, you can play So, you get the idea. Um, that's where all these cool little voicings come in, because it kind of gets boring if you're jamming with somebody or you, whatever, and you're just playing just A13 the whole time. cool to throw in other things. You kind of have to, it depends if you're playing with a keyboard player and who you're playing with. If, you, if it's just you, a bass player, and another guitar player or something, you're at liberty to do a whole bunch of things. If you're playing with a keyboard player, um, you really have to be cautious with some of the things you do. Uh, but again, that's a whole whole different lesson. So anyway, in the eighth measure, uh, after, the, after the seventh one, he goes back to the uh, A13 from the four chord. He goes to a C13 chord, and basically that's uh, your third finger on the C note, which is the uh, eighth fret of the E string. Then you're skipping the A string, and you put your pinky on the eighth fret of the D string. Your third finger on the seventh fret of the G string, and the first finger on the fifth fret of the B string. So that's really cool voicing. So that whole part after the uh, D9 section. And he does one full measure of that. And he goes to an F major 7 chord. And that's just, just like a, a regular F major chord. So if you know your C major chord down here, in order to make that a C major 7, you just lift that first finger off. That's a C major 7 chord. So that same shape comes up here, but you have to obviously do the bar portion. Uh, so your pinky's on the 8th fret of the D string, 3rd finger's on the 7th fret of the, I'm sorry, the 8th fret of the A string, 3rd uh, finger's on the 7th fret of the D string, and the first finger just bars the fifth fret of the G, B, and D string. So after the C13, it goes to the F major 7. And then he goes to a D minor 7. And if you're not sure of that chord, again, if you know a D minor chord, basically just lift off your pinky. So it's the first finger barring the fifth fret. Uh, you're playing basically the first finger on the A string fifth fret, third finger on the seventh fret of the D string, 
A G string is, again, the barred first finger. So uh, fifth fret, G string. And then your second finger is the sixth fret of the B string. And then your first finger is still barring the fifth fret of the E string. So that's... So that progression... After that section, this is where he goes into the turnaround. And he basically does a 6-2-5-1 turnaround, which is typical jazz kind of thing. Uh, and those chords would be... But he does a little different thing here. He basically does a... Instead of doing an, uh, an A chord, A13, um, to an F sharp minor chord, which would be the sixth chord, he basically does that C13 chord again. So the first chord of the progression is in, uh, actually, you know what, he does, uh, instead of doing this 13 voicing, he actually does, he does this, it's an A add nine with a C sharp in the bass. And, uh, play it in a few different positions. Uh, the first one I'll show you is down here. Um, it's the first finger on the C sharp note of the A string, which is the fourth fret. And then you can skip the D string and play the fourth fret with the second finger on the G string. And then you bar the fifth fret of the B string and the E string. That's, again, that's an A add 9 uh, with a C sharp in the bass. And that's basically your one chord. Then the next chord he goes to, which instead of this the F sharp minor chord, which is the sixth chord, he goes to this C13 chord, which again, the, the notes in the chord are very similar to an F sharp minor chord. Those two notes are the flat... Uh, the minor third and the fifth of F sharp minor. Uh, that's why this chord kind of works. And then he goes to a B minor 11 chord. Uh, and then he goes to an E 11 chord. And again, if you follow the bass line, what's happening, instead of doing the typical 1, 6, 2, 5, uh, the 1, 6, 2, 5 progression, Instead of doing that, he's doing... And back to the one. Uh, it's just a different kind of thing, and you know, it's, it's a different way of playing that turnaround. So again, the C13, you already know. The B minor 11 is just dropping that C note down to the uh, B note, which is the sixth fret, or I'm sorry, the seventh fret of the E string skip the A string, you play the uh, seventh fret on both the D and G string with your third and fourth finger, and then your first finger can bar the fifth fret of the, uh, of the B and E string. Uh, did I say that right? So that's the seventh fret basically of the E, uh, D, and G string, and the fifth fret of the B and E string. And that's your uh, B minor 11 chord. Then your E 11 chord is basically taking that shape and moving it up one string. Uh, so you're playing the seventh fret of the A string, you skip the D string, and you play the seventh fret of the B string and the, uh, I'm sorry, the G string and the B string. And then your first finger again is still on the first fret of the E string. So that progression is, uh, you play here. I'm sorry. Uh, and back to the one chord. And then another thing, if you notice what he's doing is he's walking down. The, the, the progression goes from this would be the one, six, uh, two, five. And what he's doing here is... Uh, 
actually he's not doing that. He's not starting on that root note. He's starting on the third. And that's what he's getting out of that that 13 um the A add 9 with the C sharp in the bass. He's starting with a third, so And in fact, that progression you if you want to add something different to it, you can actually instead of going from that the first chord to the C13 to the B flat instead of going up to that E which is a lot of tension to go back to the one which is great you can actually go to that B flat uh, 7 sharp 11 so you could do a complete walk down of so you could have these chords Anyway, I know that was a lot of talk on the chords. Uh, I think a lot of guys can get use out of that if you haven't done a lot of examining chord progression. So I hope you enjoyed that and let's move on to the solo part. <laughs>